network monitors such as Wireshark really make network analysis easier. The analysis doesn't have to concern each individual packet. It may be a session or a protocol analysis. It can have the form of charts presenting certain relations or hierarchy statistics showing how much data was sent through which protocol. The program offers such functionalities. In Wireshark, you can also create your own intrusion detection systems through packet colorization. Wireshark is a free network monitor. After preparing your file, simply start the network monitor and watch whether packets colored, for example orange, do not appear on the screen. Unless they do, everything is well. If certain colors start appearing, you immediately know what's going on because you've previously created a coloring rule. The advantage of Wireshark is that it collects data sent by all types of popular networks, Ethernet, Bluetooth, or less commonly used Token Ring. The data collection program uses Win PCAP library in the Windows environment. You can use it to collect data sent over wireless networks too, but it requires the Air PCAP adapter or a Wi-Fi adapter compatible with Wireshark. On the airpcap.com website, you can order such an adapter. The image you see above represents the statistics collected by Wireshark. This alone can let you detect suspicious situations such as, for example, unusually high numbers of broadcasts or data transmission errors. However, there is one problem with Wireshark. You should not filter the data the program captures. If you did, you would make the same mistake as the manufacturers of firewalls and intrusion detection systems. You would collect information only about the known threats. Instead, what you'd like to do is gather all possible data and analyze them later. Before creating capturing filters, you should relieve Wireshark in another way. Actually, you can do this in several ways. You can disable updating packets in real time, you can also disable auto-scroll, and you can disable automatic conversation of MAC and IP addresses to domain names. Also, a good way to relieve the program is to uncheck the option which reassembles fragments of IP protocol packets and verifies their checksums. Wireshark does this automatically by default. You can also disable TCP validation. If all of these ways do not help, you can start Wireshark from the command line just in order to capture data you will analyze yourself later. You can customize Wireshark to suit your needs. This applies to all windows you can see in the picture below. Wireshark consists of three sections. At the top of the window, you can observe all packets collected. Below are the details of the packets you selected from the top window. At the bottom is the data sent within the packet you selected. All of that can be customized to suit your needs the best. You can change the order of the columns in the main window, and add or remove columns. You can filter the data being displayed. This is something completely different than filtering captured data. The program still captures everything, but it only shows you what interests us at the moment. We can also create coloring rules based on any piece of information captured by Wireshark. These can include, for example, combinations of TCP header fields. If you choose glaring colors, you'll have the perfect intrusion detection system. Wireshark gives you more than just real-time analysis. It allows you to create all kinds of reports. For example, you can browse through objects downloaded within the HTTP session. In a while, we'll find out how to do that. Wireshark also enables you to observe the communication between computers on the TCP level or on the HTTP level. The program allows you to check which servers you really connect to when you type an address in your browser. For sure, there will be more than one server. This feature has a very practical application. Earlier, we mentioned that a simpler way of intrusion detection is to analyze the network traffic generated by a given program. Wireshark allows you to see which hosts that your computer has never connected to before is connected to now. In the same way, you can check if the amount of sent and received data has changed. But to make all of this information relevant, you have to have something to compare it against. Using Wireshark in your network for a month or two, you'll acquire a reference point because you'll learn what kind of activity is normal and which is not. It's much easier to get to know the characteristics of the network traffic this way than to run a pre-configured intrusion detection system and wait until a certain alarm goes off. If you'd like to consult charts, Wireshark can generate various types. Some are quite complex and allow, for example, the evaluation of bandwidth and session validity. There's also a functionality called Expert Functions. In Wireshark, the most common issues reported are non-security issues. Strictly speaking, it's not an intrusion detection system. For example, if a program performs the Xmas tree scan on your computer, this will not be reported as the Xmas tree scan, but as an illogical combination of flags in the TCP header.